Tecla Structures has many different useful commands and tools. Today I'm going to talk about four of them. Hello and welcome to CS Wilson Draws. I'm CS Wilson and if you work with Tecla you know that there's tons of available commands. Today I'm going to focus on four of them, which also happen to be the four that I've been using the most. Now, these aren't in any particular order, and the numbers are just there for a countdown, because YouTube loves countdowns. Anyway, there's a lot to cover, so let's get started. Number four, phases and the phase manager. I like to use phases in the same way that layers are used in most 2D CAD programs. You can assign objects to specific phases in your model to keep things organized. This can be done at any time while modeling by opening up the phase manager and either setting the current phase before you start modeling and the current phase number and name appears in the bottom toolbar, or by selecting objects then choosing a phase and clicking on the modify phase button. You can specify the phase numbers as well as the title of your liking. There's also a host of other attributes and data that you can specify that I don't really bother with, but they're there for your use if you so choose. Phases also come in handy if you ever want to copy something from one model to another using the aptly named copy from another model command, since with that you have to specify the phase of the objects you want to copy. Not only do phases help keep things nice and tidy in the model and allow for more precise copying from one model to another, they also have the extra added benefit of making it easier to create our next useful tool. Number three, filters. The selection of view filters found in the model editor and the drawing editor are very easy to use and also very versatile. The selection filter can be found on the bottom toolbar and in the model editor you can quickly switch between different selection filters by using the drop down box or you can open the selection filter dialog right next to it which is used to load, define, and save all the selection filters. In the drawing editor the drop down box isn't present so you have to open the selection filter dialog to access the available filters. So how do the phases help with the filters? I can simply create a new filter and start off by adding a row. I like to make the category an object since that incorporates most entities that I use in my models. Then under property I select phase and leave the condition to equals if I want to include things and does not equal if I wanted to exclude things. Set the value to the phase number or to make it easier you could also pick the select from model option and then pick an object on the phase that you want. That works too. When you're done with that check the name and click Save As. Now, when I'm in my model, I can select the newly created filter from this list. Another note about the Selection Filter dialog. You can open up more options by clicking on the double arrow button and then putting a check next to all of the filter types you want this filter to be associated with. For example, if I wanted the filter I just created to be available as a selection filter in the drawing editor, I can put a check in this box under Drawing. And now when I'm in the Drawing Editor, I can open the Selection Filter dialog and the filter is now available to me here as well. There are many other ways that filters can be used. I've just scratched the surface of their potential. So I'd say if you're not already using filters, it's something that I highly recommend that you look into. Number two, keyboard shortcuts. One of the best productivity enhancements that came about in Tecla Structures 2016 dealt with the keyboard shortcuts. They've now been given their own beautiful standalone interface, which includes such features as the ability to define shortcuts in three different groups, the ability to use modifier combos, such as Shift Control or Control Alt, the ability to define two keystroke shortcuts a list box showing the available commands and their associated shortcut, if it's defined, a conflict monitor, and an easy to use per key or group restore button in case you really get things screwed up or you just want to set everything back to the factory defaults. 
Using keyboard shortcuts is the easiest way to boost productivity by assigning your most used commands to easily reachable keys. This saves a lot of travel time with the mouse, and as screens are getting larger and larger, that travel time is getting longer and longer. This is another tool that, if you're not already using it, I highly recommend that you consider using it. And setting it up doesn't have to be a huge major undertaking. You can do like I do and just add commands on the fly as you need them. If, while you're working, you find yourself going to the ribbon over and over again for the same command, just load up the keyboard shortcut interface and assign a key to it. Doing it little by little makes it way easier to remember the shortcuts you've defined plus where you put them on the keyboard. Although I'd still keep a cheat sheet just in case. Number one, the contextual toolbar. The contextual toolbar, formerly known as the mini toolbar, is another tool that got a reboot in version 2016. Now, I have to admit, I didn't really use the mini toolbar in previous versions of Tecla Structures. When I went back to those versions to try it out to see what it was like so I could compare it to the new contextual toolbar, I couldn't get the mini toolbar to work. So instead of a comparison, I'll give my overall impressions of the new contextual toolbar even though most of its functionality was likely present in earlier versions of Tecla structures. The contextual toolbar allows you to change some of the most common properties of whatever object you have selected. These properties vary depending on which objects those are and how you have it configured. You can now configure which objects actually appear in the toolbar for each object type. This can be achieved by clicking on the Customize button where the current object will be displayed along with its customizable elements. With the elements, you can enable or disable, assign an icon or title, or for some, you can change the width of the display with this slider bar. There's even a preview window that updates dynamically so you can see what your toolbar will look like before you commit. At the top, you can select other contextual toolbars and customize them as well. In addition to all that customization, there's a paintbrush that's used to copy most of the properties from the current object to another object, or multiple objects if you double-click on the paintbrush. I found that when you copy from one object to another that's the same type, for example, beams, columns, plates, etc., all of the properties are copied over except the UDAs, the User Defined Attributes. For those, you'll have to use the Main Properties dialog. Also, if you have multiple screens and you've set up your views to be allowed outside the main Tecla Structures program window, you should keep the toolbar in its expanded state. In other words, don't minimize it. You should pin it somewhere handy that will be away from your view windows. If you have it pop up dynamically wherever your pointer is, it tends to slip behind the view window. I normally keep it docked in an unused area of the screen, like the ribbon, the bottom toolbar, or the corner of the right monitor. All in all, the contextual toolbar is a very intuitive and robust tool that should be in your everyday arsenal. Well, that wraps up the four useful Tecla Structures Tools episode. This is all subject to change and will probably be the topic of a future video. Who knows? So all of this makes me curious. What's your most used Tecla Structures tool? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Anyway, I hope you found this informative, and if so, please give it a like. Plus, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.